All right, big man, welcome to Dave Portnoy Show with Eddie and Company, presented by High Noon. You got your wish, Dave. Did you see? I, yeah, I did see. And this is an empty that I didn't clean off. Oh, I thought it was actually uh, passion fruit. It's pineapple. Somebody sent the passion fruit in a fort. I don't know if that's new or that's always been there, and I've been in the dark. But I saw the four-pack of passion fruit. You better, hey. If you're a passion fruit walking down the street, you better get to the other side of the street if you see me coming because I'm buying all the passion fruit. I haven't seen those four packs anywhere except in that picture. I actually looked. I'm like, is this Photoshop? It must have already been out. They couldn't. I don't think High Noon could operate that quickly from us saying we wanted it to like a week later being available. So it must have just been available. And you know what? I'm going to get to the bottom of it. There but yeah, I did see that. Um, so again, great sponsor. Love them. I've been on a high noon fiesta for the last couple of weeks. Uh, has passion fruit always been available in four packs? I don't want to make it all about passion fruit like i yeah. feel like the other flavors may be getting jealous being like why is passion fruit like get all this hype from dave but on the rundown the other day i asked dan and kevin i'm like what are your favorite flavors they didn't have passion fruit in the top three but they had never tried passion fruit so passion fruit still like paul have you had passion fruit yeah but i'm a watermelon guy i've, I've i don't actually don't even know if i've had passion fruit since like a while ago yeah i mean i like watermelon too <laughs> it's i'm passion fruit pineapple watermelon or watermelon pineapple but the passion fruit passion fruit all right i'm just gonna I, I feel like i'm gonna get the other flavors jealous that's all yeah i mean them and mango came late to the game so people are they're catching up they're catching up in the race so um go grab some high noon pretty much at any liquor store beer store wherever you could find it dude what's up with your, um, what's up with your uh, headphone swag right now? well well it, it, that's a good point eddie in new york in states where you sell liquor and uh, beer different, you will have to go different stores. The passion fruit or the high noons are available only at liquor stores. Beer is where we're going to find truly uh, White Claw because they're malt based. We are just vodka juice. Also, I found an interesting thing about, I don't want to make this all about, it. did you know when I did name flavors for high noon, they don't do like fake flavors. Like they're not going to do like creamsicle and shit like that because they will only put one juice and one vodka in it so there is they're oh. like passion fruit i wasn't sure if that was even a thing but it's an actual mm. fruit oh wow so like a strawberry kiwi is off the board no, off the board oh, okay that's good to know yeah I, that's never before seen no um so yeah go grab your high noon uh we're gonna be having kfc on later uh just because people have really been liking the inside barstool talk so we'll talk to him a little bit i think tico's coming too she was very angry about something yeah but to- i have no idea what that was about and um, I, but to kick it off, uh, Paul see did that? ask. See no, that? what happened? See the marketing there? Genius. Oh, there you go. Good product placement. Genius. Um, I gotta get a sign. People, by the way, somebody was tweeting at me like, "Of course, Dave would have." I'm not in my house. You think this thing is mine? Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, that thing's pretty brutal, though. It's interesting. It actually works. I feel like in terms for a backdrop of like, uh, what is just um. What's the word I'm looking for? Feng shui? No, no. It's a tapestry, right? Yeah, it is a tapestry. But I mean, it, the, the the difference between me in front of it, I feel like kind of works, not like for a podcast. Depth? Oh. What? Like the depth of it? Yeah, something like that. Yes. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Good depth. Um, so Gaz asked, why are you wearing your headphones like that? I assume because Good. the surgery touch up? Yeah, hair surgery that I had last week. So I did the rundown. I had them on the correct way. Rundown was like 30, 35 minutes, and it was starting to kind of bother me. If you, if you go to the Zapruder film yesterday on the rundown, you'll see that I keep, like, picking them up off my head. Uh, I'm doing way better than I did last time I had this surgery. Uh, way better. Way better. But it's still, like, to put headphones directly on where it's still healing – um, does hurt. So yeah, we're doing upside down. What was the report? What did the doc say? Yeah. yeah. What? What did the doc say? Was it like everything looks good? Just a little touch up or yeah, hey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it, it wasn't. You know, it. Again, it's not a pleasant thing to go through, but I'm glad I did it at this point. I have stitches in my head. That's the problem still. Oh, so no. it stitches stay in for about ten days. 
So I'm getting those out before March Madness. That's why I picked this window. Um, but yeah, I'm doing way better than I did last time. Maybe so because you, I knew what I was in for, but. Do you have like one of those gashes on the back of your head though? Oh yeah, yes. Oh, you Franken do? Like Frankenstein. Oh, really? You just can't see it because that's where natural hair grows, right? Correct, yes. So, I okay. mean, it's a simple, not to gross people out. It's a very, and, and um, you know, it, it's a very simple process. They just take working follicles, take them out, at the top, it's like kind of skin level, and then they just put them where you're weak, and it grows. Now, I've done it at the perfect time we talked about before. And by the way, a lot of people ask me, Dr. Leonard, that's who I use. Um, I think it's Dr. Hare. Now, he retired, but it's, um, and we'll edit this in. What is my guy's name? Let me just look. I think it's Dr. Hare, isn't it? No. Uh, Dr. Leonard Hare Care. Leonard Hare, Hare Doctor, that's it. Uh, Dr. Robert Leonard, but he's gone, so it is now. It's Matthew Lepresti. Yeah, Matthew Lepresti, okay. So a lot of people ask, it's actually, which says my age and our following, like when I posted the picture, it, it maybe is the top like five, thing, five things I got inquiries about from guys. Being like, I'm debating doing it. Can you tell me, does it hurt? Is it worth it? And I guess when you're my age, or there's a lot of people who think the same thing. So I, and also I asked who the doctor is because it's a surgery that's, you know, dealing with your head and invasive. So I went to Dr. Leonard, it's, it's the actual, it's hairdoctor.com. He retired, Matthew Lepresti, Dr. Matthew Lepresti is who did mine. They're great. I've known about him, Paul has probably heard. If you're from our neck of the woods, like Massachusetts, they're, they, they've been advertising for 20 years. They've done, you know, Wes Welker and, and um, did they do, uh, who's the linebacker they did? Ninkovich, Rob Ninkovich. And mm. so I, I knew about him forever. Uh, and, and I, it, it's one of those things you gotta make the decision. I did it at the perfect right time for me because this is all natural. Like that, uh, there's nothing going on in the front. That's my hair. And this is all natural. I was going weak in the crown, but my hair's still full. So you wouldn't know I had it. Um, and yeah, I'd recommend it. It's like nine, 10 grand for the surgery. And mm, you're supposed to do it every, I think, five, six, seven years if you want to, like, refresh it. But if, if you're at the right spot, I'd recommend it. And I have nothing but great things to say about the doctors. So uh, they're based out of, I think, Newton. They have a couple offices. I think it's booked six months out. That's how hard it is Holy to get shit. an appointment. Yeah. Wow. All right, good. Good recommend. I, that's way cheaper than I thought it was, too. Yeah, it is. It is like, and I guess I would be the same if I was debating it. You want a trustful trustworthy opinion about it before it's not for everybody but i've done it twice and i would do it. i hate going through the process but once it's over it's like yep that was worth it i'm gonna have to go check it out i'm getting a little weak in the crown myself yeah um, they'll do it for you for free oh yeah like mine mine i let them say that i did it so to be uh -huh. honest they make out like bandits because I post one picture and I mean, I charge more than 10 grand for that, but yeah. um, I've, I've known them forever and they've been good to me. So yeah, if you want to oh, check nice. it out again, hair doctor, yeah, it's hairdoctor.com. I post a picture with the dude, girls are freaking out though. Like, he's so hot. Um, all right, so good, glad your hair surgery went uh, nice. Uh, I think KFC's in, we could just bring him in and we could do everything after, so. Uh, Kevin, can you hear me? Yes, sir, what's up? What's going on? I don't know. I'm, I'm come. Everyone's like got like a smirk on their face when I walked in. I was like, "Why am I here? What's going on?" And everyone's kind of like, "I, I, I don't know." What's? <laughs> I have no, no idea. No, no. I, I have no idea. Okay. This, this news to me. Okay. No, no. Just... This is not. This is no setup. Okay. This okay. is. Uh, I know you guys do the mon Monday rundowns now, and I know yeah. it's you know, but it's mostly about like topical, like pop culturey shit. I feel like you guys haven't really chopped it up about the company in a while, and people have really been enjoying that aspect of this show. And uh, I think Kevin is like a unique situation being like, what were you employee number three, Kevin? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. So number three behind well, Paul. If you count, you it know, like all... Rear Admiral and Jerry Thornton and all those guys, you know, early on. But once we expanded. Pay uh, I guess it de de determines like actual payroll on ADP. Like, because we had, I mean, I would consider 
Manzo, yeah. Chisholm, Chisholm, those guys' yeah. employees. Right. But, like, we weren't paying at the time. There's a guy uh, who was my first sales guy. Oh, Phil Norton. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> That's I, one I don't even know. Phil Norton? <laughs> Phil <laughs> Norton. <laughs> And what Phil Norton was like on payroll. I think it was getting 250 bucks a week and then commission. Um, yeah. But he was, was that the first newspaper or website? Newspaper. He was that, a newspaper I don't know why Phil guy. Norton makes me laugh, but that name is just <laughs> Phil Norton. <laughs> Phil Norton reached out, and I used to work at like camp with him back in the day. Like before I started Barstool, when I started, he's like, all right, I'll join. He was from Marblehead. Do you hear from that old. guy at all? He, the business insider tried to reach I, that's how deep they were digging business, business insider, insider we, found phil norton they found phil norton <laughs> and Jesus. phil norton sent me his response which was like basically i die for dave fuck you yeah um do you, do you have so, anybody that like uh that like was kind of involved like do any of the older guys reach out like fuck i should have stuck around like i if, if i knew it was going to be like this i would have you know well chisholm came or, back for one day right Manzo did come back on payroll. Yeah, yeah. So, like, does Chisholm are, or any of those guys be like, "Fuck, I wish I just like went all maybe, in on it." Maybe, yeah, I, maybe Jamie, but I, he's got a super successful career. I don't think Manzo has any desire. I don't think yeah. um, he didn't even want to be part of like the documentaries, which is I always thought we got along like really good. So I don't know what happened with that. Oh, you, do you um, personally not get along with Manzo anymore? I know it wasn't no. like a great thing, but. I like I like him. If yeah. he doesn't like me, I I don't know. He's on that boat for the uh, Jeter, Jeter thing, but no, I. That's really it. I don't know if any of them really Chisholm, but he's doing really well. I think Jamie would probably rather do what we're doing. He's in like politics now. I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I I have a lot of guilt about Manzo. I hate the way that that went down. It just but it just was not really working. No. He was a so, long form writer. Yeah, yeah. For people and, that don't know, Kev, can you can you let them know what happened to Manzo, the guy who wrote for Barcelona, New York? Well, yeah, he, for, I mean, he bit? was like a legend for the newspaper writer, <clears throat> newspaper days. And then when I was still at, working as an accountant, and like before I went full time, he came on. So K. Marco switched over to Barcelona U, and then Manzo kind of came in and took his spot. So we were going to tag team New York, and it just like was not a good fit like newspaper versus blog and the way that the company was evolving and so and then the infamous jeter he was out on a boat the day that jeter got his 3000th hit which was like a walk-off home run it was like the most he hit for the cycle he hit for the he? cycle it was like it was like <laughs> everything you can do in a baseball game mashed into one and manzo had a pre-written blog ready to go in case he wasn't around because he was out on a boat that day that was just like yay jeter got his 3000th hit and it was like you know none of the details none of the uh, none of that. So that sucked. And, and I think even besides the Jeter thing, I don't think it was going to, like, work out long term. Yeah. But, you know, I just – I don't like the fact that, you know, he probably made moves to come back and then got fired. So I I, I, that, I always felt a lot of guilt over that. That And that was in the era of, like, grind. Like, yeah. that, that That's when you was, had to you be on top. Yeah, you didn't – if something was even potentially happen, you had to be in front of your computer unless you were Smitty. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I, you know, I said that Manzo is the most talented writer we've ever had. Mm -hmm. If you read his old stuff, the long form, there he can go toe to toe with like Simmons in his prime. So we brought him back, and it just it it, it didn't work. It didn't work. Yeah, and and it was like I I that actually almost that kind of pushed me to finally like go full time because I was like I can't let somebody else come in and like fuck up what we've been building the like me and Ke k marco were building like the right way so in, in a weird way it kind of ended up helping but i did always, i mean i wish it you know all worked out better but you know. very different type of writing he yeah. would write like we the, the old barstool was one article every two weeks and his were home runs so you're oh, like wow. must read i didn't know it was that that yeah. infrequent. Oh shit! So yeah, when you and go you from could once blog every two weeks to like once every yeah. hour, you're yeah, fucking... you could put stuff on the website occasionally, but it wasn't like it was one article, one long form article every two weeks. Paul, I was doing it? more like out? I was doing random thoughts and okay, stuff. Okay, yeah, you were writing like yeah. every day. Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Paul, was he? So does he not like Dave Manzo? I reached out to him a ton for the documentary. I think he was the only original guy we couldn't get in touch with, like Uncle Buck, who did all like the fucking Uncle porn Buck galleries or whatever. Creep. He was uh, the best but, creep in the world. By the way, I don't think Manzo does not like. I, he's just a, a unique guy. He probably doesn't even like us talking about it. But I always like really, really liked yeah. Manzo. Yeah, I think yeah. he responded always. once and then just kind of passed. That was kind of where it was at. 
But he's a quirky guy. He's like I, I feel I, like again, that's I, probably I, you you think he's cool and just doesn't want to be a part of it. I feel like there's probably He's a quirky enough guy where he there. may not want like to be in spotlight, I don't know. I, he was always a quirky guy. I don't think there was ever issues with him. I, I hope think. that's the case, but I just feel like if that if if that was me, and I I would I would say that I'd be like, thanks for you know including me, but like I just don't want any of the spotlight. Whereas I think if you just say no, it's kind of like, fuck you. Pete Manzo is a quirky guy. Yeah. I, it, 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 that's, you would know better, so I don't know. Yeah. He's a very quirky guy, and I mean that in a way that I really, really liked him. So it's rare that I really, really like somebody. They don't like me at all. They hate me. I don't think he does, but who knows? It was strange. You didn't want to be part of that. So where are you guys at? How often do you guys, like, talk and meet and, like, like you know, Never. do this kind of thing? Never? Yeah. The, mo- the Monday rundowns are the most interaction we've had in a couple years. Never. <laughs> the, 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 really? the, the best way to put it was uh, the Monday of Super Bowl week. We te- I texted him asking if I could do One Minute Man on the Midas Touch thing because I, I, I wasn't sure if I could touch that for the main account, whatever. And so it was Monday morning of the Super Bowl week, and he was like, um, you know, where are you? Where are we doing the rundown from? Whatever. And I was like, I'm not even there, Dave. You, like, you didn't even know that I, was at the, I wasn't at the Super Bowl. So that's where we – that's, like, the last time we talked. And then, and then the Monday resurgence, though. What's been, the, yeah. uh, what's been behind that, Dave? I feel like you're, you're much more motivated to make those happen. Because we've said let's do one Skype a, a week forever. We never, never did it. Yeah. Uh, I guess my schedule, like, being more remote, I have more time. Like, I'm not getting dragged. In, like, in the office, I just get pulled in a million different ways when I'm in New York. So I'm a little more – like, my schedule is a little more locked here. Do you, do you like doing them when they're just regular days? I feel like it's almost better when we wait for, like, a real story. Yeah, no, I, I, correct. Well, it's, Mondays usually it, you have stuff because there is, like, it comes off the weekend. But, yeah. But, like, it, when it, it was, like, Brady's retirement and then the week after that something else happened. There was, like, a couple Mondays in a row where there was, like, good bar Yeah, still obviously topics. it's always easier. Yeah. But I'm, I was planning on starting to do it more even if you and Dan aren't available. Just getting, no, I'm down. you know. Yeah, yeah, well, you start, you said you were going to try to do, like, three to four a week, which is – that's Three. I was going to try to start so, to do there's three. There's only four in a week, Dave. There's no way you're going to do three rundowns a week. Well, I, I thought we were doing Fridays. Monday, Wednesday. I don't know. Whatever. If I'm yeah. sitting around, I have nothing to do. I can do it. Yeah, I'm down to do it, too. The people do love that. It's so funny. Double. Even when I – even, like, one of them was, like, pretty normal the other day. Like, there's been – I think, like, three of the four we've done have had arguing and screaming and yelling, and I get that. But one of them was, like, totally normal, and people were like – that's just the best. I was like, all right. I mean, the if you data, like it. The data came up this week in a meeting at a minimum double the views. At a minimum. Well, that's not overly surprising. No. That's not like a, more than that. That's like if you go see Journey and they don't have their original cast and then Journey's like, hey, we're actually the original band members. No, but you know, it's, it's funny because it's like, like I said, you know, one of the rundowns was just us talking that like three other guys here probably could have done just as easily, but. It's not like that, you know, it's an amazing thing every time, but people seem to love, like, no matter what we end up talking about, how we end up talking about it, it's that much better in their eyes. Yeah. It's also dangerous ground, but, what, like, I guess we'll be more kids, not live, like, one time we did live, but. You think it's dangerous ground when, when the three of us get together? If it was live, yes. Why is that? Because we live in a very different world than, like, early rundowns like the things that we like oh, once yeah, yeah, yeah. we i feel like we we work each other up and then you're we're going to say things that would not be received well mm-hmm. by those who don't care for us sure but sure. it's not live so it doesn't i was going to say yeah that, that like that, that i mean there, yeah correct it is crazy when hearing some of the shit that we like when we when that whole thing happened with the rundown that nobody batted an eyelash when it first happened like, nobody thought, like, let's edit this or not do this or not talk about well, it. It was just. I, I've used the analogy. I mean, it, it, it's a little simplistic, but, and there's shit that obviously in hindsight, go, oh, that shouldn't have been said. But it, 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 if you know it's not coming out of a place of, hey, it's like yeah. the office. Like, the office couldn't say stuff, and, and right. no one ever said anything, and we're just kind of riffing. So, it is what it is. Kevin, do you kind of yearn for that kind of shit? Or are you cool kind of doing your own thing with, with, with John and One Minute Man? Or, like, do you kind of miss, like, doing radio yeah, no, with Dave and whatnot? No, yeah, no. I, I definitely – I miss radio. Um, I miss, like – With me? You miss radio with me? Yeah. That was fun. Oh, I hated that by the end. I really didn't <laughs> – like, I hated it. Why? 
I didn't like you. It was <laughs> you, like just everything was just... Ugh. And that happens, by the way, with a lot of people you do daily radio with. Like that people end up not caring for each other. By, but I needed a break from that. Because we were arguing so much? Yeah, like, yes. That's what it, that's what it is, though. That's like the... Yeah, that's the, no, that's but what if you... do to put on an entertaining yeah. show. But if you... Re, yeah, and what, like Mike and the Mad Dog hate each other. If you recall the end of the rundown, like... We couldn't stand each other like before the turn, like you two, you and Dan versus me. And the internal dynamics, which has always been at Barcelona, which you, Dan, myself, no, we've been doing it so long. At times, people don't like it. Just it's like a band that's together, and if you just, it's hard to do it every day. Yeah, I guess I, I just knew that it was like a good show, so I was okay with it. Like I yeah. knew there was a lot of like disagreement and a lot of arguing, but I was always like, that's that's what we do. That's what. And know. I was. It wasn't just that, like there's so much, I don't know if Gaz is smirk, but there's so much business shit that is going on. And you look at people who do other shows, that's like their full-time job. Yeah. We were doing like a two hour show in the and middle of it's everything just else. one of 10 things that we're doing in yeah. like a day. And it's just like draining and exhausting. And obviously things like we've diverted Kevin and I and what we do and Dan and I now do a lot more simply because of really the pen like yeah, deal. Gambling. Like gambling became a, a major focus and will continue to be and like we're crisscrossing traveling and we keep it real like Dan and I gamble. Kevin does yeah. not. I, yeah. I do wish I mean I, I never it's, it's not something you, it's not something you can pick up and just like become a gambler but obviously seeing where things go there are times where I'm like fuck i wish i gambled this would be a lot yeah. different of a dynamic if if i you know bet and then even once it happened and it was like don't fake it i would never fake it but i was thinking to myself even if i started to just learn it or pick it up or do it by now it would probably be more natural like i don't think yeah. it would be totally phony if i had you know what i mean so i'm, I'm wondering if like but you're doing all the other stuff like i yeah. mean the perfect example of it is is elio like, you can't fake no, what he's doing absolutely every not. single no. night. And I would never try it, to do that. But if I just, like, subtly had a, a yeah. gambling avenue where it's, like, you know, a pick a week or something with the Mets or where it is natural, uh, you know, it's probably I mean, better that, to be involved that, in gambling than not, right? That you could, like, probably figure out. Like, anytime somebody's but is it paying, worth like, it? but if you pay in a, a, Intense. Uh, well, it wouldn't be much skin off your back if you're watching the Mets every night. You can have a Mets pick. No, yeah, every but night. I, I mean, like, do you think that that would uh, be worth it I think in the sense of like, you know, would Penn? Because I'll do that. You know what I mean? If it's better for business, if you know, one of the original personalities yeah. is also now in gambling, yeah, I'll do I it. Mean, but I also just never wanted to be phony about it. Yeah, if it's real. I yeah. mean, Penn looks at everything. It's like if suddenly you're doing big numbers, like that helps you, that helps everybody. But right. that's not an easy thing to do. Like, Elio no. has built it up pretty decently with the hockey, which is not primary sport. But, I mean, it's so authentic, and he's so – I mean, I've known him my whole life, so I know there's no fake. In, but you can tell. Like, you can tell, you know. Is he on and, the payroll? He, he's we're, – we're working on it. Okay. But he's he's started out just like – I'm a, for free. I'm a gambler, and I'm going to use Barstool because I'm a Barstool guy. And it's well, yeah, he's one of my best friends. Right, 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 right. So he just organically started doing shit. He didn't know anything. And, it, like, I think he had 8,000 people who did his last, like, wow. T-shirt bet. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure I could do hockey. some Met stuff. I'm sure I could do something simple enough. But I also, you know, I've seen when people try to, to dip Total. their toe in the gambling water, and you can tell it's like you're – you know, you're doing this for work or for the money or to be cool or you know, whatever. So I definitely don't want that. But if it is natural and it is a fit, uh, I've always thought about trying to dive in a little bit. So I know that obviously it started with lines, gambling lines. Wait, hang on, real quick though. Let me just go back to radio. When you when we would like argue on radio, when like the show was over, would you 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 would walk out of there like? No, it depends what it is. I just remember by the end of it, I was just like. Because I think it was Ugh. more of the fact that it was like two hours a day. Like, I don't even know it may have been that. if it was me and you. Obviously, it was heightened. Also, don't more. forget we had Liz in there. That, that was That's life. what I was going to say. <laughs> Towards the end, that was, I think, what was a problem. Because it was like, I remember trying to, like, defend her at times when it was, like, a stupid argument so that it wasn't just a bloodbath and we had to well, she, walk she on eggshells. And it was like, I mean, geez. it was good. It was good. I get tired. I, yeah. It, I, it, it was so long ago. We split it up to create more time, I think. 
Um, well, I think it was also better. You know, it was like you could fill out a whole, a whole station if it was like I have a couple hours, you have a couple hours, Dan has a couple hours. I mean, if we had all three of us on yeah. one show every day, it'd be great. But it would be you know all we do. But I, I, when I say I miss it, I feel like I mean I definitely there were times where it was a grind and I fucking hated talking to you too. But I acknowledged that it was like what the people wanted, and it it's kind of like the old school, you know. When we would go yeah. toe to toe and argue and all that kind of shit, the people liked it. I would enjoy it from that point of view. I also don't know how much you pay attention to like what I'm doing with like the Dave Portnoy show and um, BFFs, but even with that show too, I, and there is no answer because we're a unique thing in which we do so much. But I get frustrated. Like I would get frustrated that I wasn't getting new like new ideas. It just seemed like we were going out there and not making a show that's like spectacular, which I know we can do, but no one has the time. Like there should've been people like sitting down, concepts. I, I want to be able to sit down in a chair and have like unbelievable ideas and everything ready, which I've always, that's been a pet peeve of mine doing all the stuff. I don't, I don't think get that's to, what people want though. Like I- No, I, but- I, I think, I, you know, like some new, new listeners would maybe want to hear us talk about like the perfect topics and great interesting shit. But I think that it would like, it doesn't matter what the topic is when it's like kind of like the rundown oh. when the three of us get together, when you get the right personalities in the room, like, like people, I feel like people remember the episode where you were on hold with the American express, the entire episode, full two hours of you on American express talking about your points. That I think is more memorable and entertaining than like, here's the topics yeah, of the day. It, yes. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. But that, that pops up, but you, I, I'm convinced you need segments like Dan's the best at that and the Yak has done it and PMT like when you have those core segments even like the pizza one minute those are like programmable shit mm -hmm. and unique concept and unique ideas that I think you need and we just never had yeah time to I, I, I mean I do think that's probably the, the the script for radio but I also think that's what let's take a quick break here let's talk about uh, bird dogs all right, Bird Dogs, best shorts on the market. I also wore the joggers. I was in Boston, was wearing them, warm to surgery, so comfortable, warm everywhere. Um, what? Eddie. Hey, what's up? Breaking news. What's wrong? Aaron Rodgers just re-signed for four years with the Packers. No. Four? I just wanted to let you know. Yep. On International Women's Day, he goes and fucking cucks all the women in the world. He... He had to have been doing that. I mean, he would have been the biggest asshole in the world if he didn't resign. I asked after Dragon. I, I asked the I asked Westy if I could fake a text exchange with Aaron Rodgers, him saying, "Hey, can you put in this eight team parlay with me?" And he said, "Probably not." So I'm gonna Westy, figure out something. The, ulti the ultimate fun killer. Uh, by the way, also Mincy is back. I don't know if you guys wanted him on, but he's in the office. Oh. The tour is <laughs> no. officially over. I just wanted to tell you, Eddie. I, Do you see when Mincy uh, thanked himself? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, he put on a great tour. He did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just want to let you know, Eddie, because, the, like, everyone, it was one of those situations. I was sitting at my desk minding my own business, and Chuck just walks up to me with a phone in my face, and I was like, what just happened? And he was like, four years, $200 million. So I wanted to oh give it to God. you, too. All right. You just reversed ambush It's me. the worst, dude. It's the fucking worst. Four years. Fuck. That's like our whole new coach's new era. Yeah, it sucks for you. You are irrelevant for another four, four years. That's eight quick losses. I'll be 35 when that yeah. happens. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Bird dogs. As I was saying, uh, you go to birddogs.com, enter promo code Dave. They'll throw in free bird dogs beanie. I had that as well in Boston, although it wasn't that cold. I love Boston. I miss it. It was so beautiful. Um, that's birddogs.com, promo code Dave. Boom, free bird dogs beanie with your pair of bird dogs. Stay warm, comfortable this winter in your bird dogs. Super comfortable. You don't need underwear. It has the built-in. They got, they got the uh, joggers. They got the shorts. Make your thighs. Make your legs look great. I wear them, I would say, 97% of the time. All right, let's get back into KFC. I guess it's probably catering to a smaller audience, but I think the people who really like it wouldn't want. But the, I, like, I'm just agreeing. I, it, yes, it's a script, but the actual – we don't need traditional segments, but you need segments. The segments can be wildly untraditional in my mind. Yeah, I, 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 I think we could just stuff. riff and, and people would listen and like it, but 
But yeah, I get it where every day we just kind of went in and was like, what What are we going to argue about today? And I got mad at Riggs for that. I've got mad at it. It's just one of my things. So what I, what I was saying, so obviously it started with the lines in the paper, but then it predominantly turned into a, uh, you know, just guys talking what about whatever, pop culture, whatever, sports, whatever. And now it's kind of gone back into gambling. Is that kind of like disappointing to you, Kevin? Like, did like, because you're more doing the comedian thing and whatnot? No, I don't, I'm not disappointed in it. Like I said, I mean, I'd probably – be business wise maybe in a better spot if I was you know a big gambler along with with those guys um but it's just not something I've ever done so I can't you know what I mean like if I don't know if the fucking company became a huge like soccer company I'd be like I don't know I just never did that my whole life so it's not something I can you know wish that I did or and I'm not disappointed that it like went that way because it's making a fuck ton of money and that's you know good for me so (laughs) sort of (laughs) Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, it, you know, in general, being bought out and everything is obviously good for me in the future. So um, and I'm you know, it doesn't affect me like I do what I do, whether Dan's doing what he does or Dave's doing what he does. If they're gambling or not, I'm always just doing what what I do you know, best and what I'm interested in. So uh, I mean, I guess, yeah, if there was some way where somebody bought us that was like right in my alley. Sure. That would be better for me. Right. But. Theoretically, I mean, the, the, the truth of the matter is if you look at, like, the scale on zero to ten of, like, the, gam- the fact a gambling company bought us, it, it is probably, like, a seven and a half, eight benefit Kevin. Two, that it was not something. Penn didn't look at Barstool and be like, we absolutely need Kevin. They were like, we absolutely need me. And they absolutely need Dan and Erica, the three, which makes sense. They obviously want Kevin, but they're gambling. And they're like, those are the gambling people. We need them intact. So, like, I couldn't cut a deal unless Dan was in on that deal. If Kevin's like, I'm not in on this, Penn would have been like, we'll still go ahead. Mm -hmm. That's how they viewed it. So that's the bad 2%. The good 2%, I don't know who else would have fucking bought us. That's the thing. And very soon... As his, he's gonna be rich. So I mean, it, it's yeah. no overall. It's I'm like 8%, very percent. Yeah. If you could, if 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 the choice was like not be bought by Penn and just keep doing what we were doing, and uh, no, you know, I'm I'm taking that deal a hundred times out of a hundred. I would love to have been like w- part of that that trio, you know, a, a key person. But I understand if I don't gamble, that you know, why would they view me? Right. As that? And that was no disrespect to him. That's just the way it shook out yeah like it it there's really it felt if, like we if, need if, a mets guy if right. it was bought by the mets yeah if, if, if sny like a, bought us yeah if it was then a, they would be like we need kevin you yeah. know there was like a if we went like a comedy route or something like that and you know my show's got all the comics on and i wasn't involved i would be like what the fuck's going on but there was never a moment where i was like why doesn't this gambling you know I mean, we were having deep talks, like looking at their app, talking about it was just stuff that like we had done forever. So that's the way it shook out. And I mean, to be honest, since then, I feel like everybody at this point of the original group has found like their niche in the thing that is outside of Arsenal. Mine's pizza. Dan was PMT and Kevin's is one minute, man. Yeah. That's a source of like these two, Paul and Kevin. I don't know how like how that I get sometimes on the back end of it because the thing with one minute man or anything, the more controversial, the topics, the better the numbers, but there's a diminishing return for barstool, the more controversial the topic. So sometimes that I get the back. It's like, Paul's like, he wants to do this subject. I'm like, no, not worth it. I don't know how much of a conflict that actually is. Well, I think uh, it's not, I, I feel like it's uh, – there are times when I want to do something, and like anybody here, I feel like when you get told no, it's like we're so used to being able to do whatever we want. I'm like, what, what do you fucking mean no? But I usually understand why. Very rarely, like one or two times, I'll be like surprised by uh, hearing a no. What bothers me more is like the Instagram rules. I get where you're coming from. The Instagram rules of like, you know, whatever, whatever the new thing is of the week that you can't talk about, that's what pisses me off. I mean, I, I'm – Totally shadow banned. I mean, basically. Uh, it's crazy. I mean, I'm just stuck, like, completely fucking flat. Views are on my main, uh, my own account are, like, totally. De- oh, let me. T- I, pfft, 
the fucking uh, statistics team, whatever they are, the stats people, we sat down for a meeting yesterday, and they were talking about how One Minute Man was down 33% on the year. And I was like, that's just, it's just not right. I mean, I've been doing, like, looking at my own numbers. There's no way. And it turns out they would, like, include if I posted it on my account, too. They would then divide it by two for an average view count, which is fucking insane. Why do you even care? Why do I care if, if like, we're... Alex, why do you care, like, that, what, whoever, the, our, who's our statistics guy, Paul? No, I, no, I, it was a guy named Mike, I think, and Stu. Because I, we, well, like, we sat down in front of a, we sat down with, like, Erica and the sales team and everybody and... Like I want, I want people to know it's doing well and like be having, you know, be pitched as where to, where it really is. I don't want it to be the show that's yeah. down thirty three percent. I mean, listen, I, I, Paul, I'll talk to Paul. I'll do a pizza review that I know is great. Like I know what a good pizza review is, and it'll have like uh, thirty thousand views in a day when the one before it had five hundred thousand and sucked. And he's like, no, it has nothing to do with Instagram. It's like it, no, it, but I'm saying the way we're counting it, it has nothing to do with Instagram. It's I just like know. the way they're doing the numbers is fucking stupid. I'm surprised you even sit in those meetings. They yeah. have to chain me to Well, I know. I know. I don't like them. But when that happened, I was like, what the fuck is this? Kev, can you talk about that, too? You brought up the money thing and, and, and like, the key three people. And, Dave, you have you've got you guys have kind of fired back at each other a little bit throughout the year. So uh, do you feel like everything was fine on your end? Or are you, is there a little disappointment there? On what? As far as, you know, because you always say, like, oh, I'm broke and this and what. And I know, Dave, you quote tweeted it one time. We talked about it on the show. I was like, oh, shut he, up. He's yeah. going to be rich in, in be less rich. Than, unless, yeah. unless the stock market continues how it is. He'll still be well off, but he won't be as rich. But, no, he, he is, he's going to be – it's all relative. But he's going to be making – have made so much more money than he could have ever dreamed getting into this thing. And it's, sure. it's and I, and I, less never, than a year away. It's right. less than but, a year but, away. But, you know, when it was five years away, it's just a different story. Totally. So when, when I'm I've when obviously I'm, you know, like dealing with all the shit I've got to deal with and all the fucking kids' bills and shit, and you're like, you're rich. I'm like, well, I'm five years from rich. It's a long time. Let me put this on the record. I offered him fucking a loan. Oh, I'm like, like I would need... ever take. I would literally I said, go to the poor house before I take a loan. Zero, for Dave zero interest. <laughs> I said, listen, if you need money before this, I know it's coming. Yeah. And and I get it. There's also an element which I'm sure. Like, yeah, I've made a shit ton of money, and it, we have been together for a long. I was doing this ten years be almost before they came on. Like yeah. I. So, like that is the element. Of where it's like, yeah, I made a shit ton, but it's like that's what I get as the starter. Do you ever feel? Well, you're making so much money, so it probably doesn't matter. But like, I'm not. I'm not. I'm well. I'm okay. Wildly underpaid. Right, but you've made, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred million dollars, whatever. So you're good. But kind that's of on way. paper still. That's like I don't have it all. Okay. Uh, I feel like we like grinded so much, and we're kind of like setting the tone for like internet content in general that when mm -hmm. i see someone else from outside like pop off quickly and become like have a millionaire career like immediately it's it infuriates me and it's like if yes. you do good you're funny like you deserve it but it's like we set we helped set this whole industry and yeah. now people can come in and just shoot to the top where it's like, I still got to wait for this or we need it. You need to grind for 20 years before a sale ever happened. And now with a TikTok account and, you know, one podcast, you're worth more than I've ever been worth in a fucking year. It's driving yes. me crazy. That, that always drives me crazy. I think it's a good thing to be driven crazy by that. I also sometimes don't know what's real and what's not yeah. with like things that you see. Mm -hmm. um, I will say, and again, Penn, you know, the entire, like, Penn stock's been bad, DraftKings, all that shit's in the tank lately. But for the gambling side, we set the market. Yeah. We set the market, and we, I don't know what it would be now. Everything's changed. But, like, you go look at the other contracts I've referenced, the McAfee and all that. Those are all enabled by us and what we were able to do. Right. But we signed the contract first. So, yeah, I... I Again, and I think those people you're referencing, Kevin, like the, they're, they're so small. So we're looking at people like that's the new superstar. So you can't get mad if there's a new like Hollywood star. Right. That's kind of it's a very small group of people. And those people probably always existed. Uh, but yeah, it went, this is this has been uh, no overnight 
success right. obviously i mean the the what i see is in the comic world because i have so many comics on the show and they get they deserve all their own credit just because they cultivate you know their own stand up career but it's like they just discovered podcasting and internet uh, and instagram videos and like using social media and their like the whole world has changed they think they almost like invented it and they're skyrocketing from it and it's like yeah we've been doing the internet thing over here for a long fucking time guys like that's why 100%. you know it is what it is yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just part of it. it and, and I mean, even our, like, I don't, you can't, I don't think restart Barstool now. No. I don't think it will ever happen again. The, the, the landscape of media, people don't, like, when we started, and it's like at first you had to be on a TV network or, a, or, you know, radio to get your name out there. And then the internet leveled the playing field, so to speak. And we were a First. new network yeah. that could launch people, which we did, whether it be Jenna or fucking Alice Cooper or whoever it may be. But now it's very hard because you, people can launch themselves on TikTok, although it's hard to grow on TikTok, but they can do it on their own. Yeah. So why go to Barcelona? I still, it's a harder value prop. I still actually think if you're talented and you look at our track record and look at what we've done, it's kind of a no brainer Absolutely. if you think long term because you, it's like taking steroids or rocket fuel. If you're talented, you're going to go in two or three years also, from I, I, maybe normally this, huge. Maybe this is a personal preference, but to me, like the value of a steady paycheck like when i see some like comics for example like when they're grinding it out in the beginning and they're doing like open mics and they're like literally broke or if you're just making your tiktoks at home and you can't you know can't afford rent i'd much rather those first few years where you're trying to grow at least have you know some money to fucking live yeah. so i always valued that big time too yeah I mean, it, 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 it's the band label thing. It, it, yeah, do you, do, label, so like, do you think, like, I think the same way that we looked at newspapers and ESPNs and TV channels, like, you're fucking dinosaurs, you're the bad guy, you're the man, we're, like, you know, the counterculture. Do you think that we've become that now? That, like, the no, individual still, TikTok kid is like, I don't, you know, fuck Barstool, they don't, I, don't, I can do it myself now. I think people do think about that way, but I don't think it's the counterculture. The, uh, the best compliment Barstool, someone can give me or Barstool, is that I do think we've been culturally like relevant for almost two decades. Just like like still kind of cool. Yeah. And, and a lot of that may not even be our due to our own. If enough people don't like you or think you're like edgy or whatever people think of it, it keeps that Goodell, yep. all the things people say, it keeps that like counterculture vibe i've asked you this a couple of times and i think it changes throughout the years so i want to know where you're at now would you um do you still like if, if you could go back and not have ko barstool who really got to give him credit for like you know they didn't take us down but they they are the ones that like stuck that tag on us right 100 and so that kind of made us the pirate ship and the renegades and all that shit which i think helped but also, you know, personal yeah. life, business insider, like a lot of shit that probably is a headache. Would you, would you, you know, if you could go back and snap your fingers and we just stayed the, the funny sports guys, would you prefer that? Yeah, I'd probably do funny sports guys. Really? I still think we would have been successful. I, I think. I don't I mean, know if I we're like getting it. 600, you know, $400 million companies Maybe. or whatever. I don't know. I mean, we're yeah, growing. Like, if you look at. K.O. Barstool, for example, w that was during the Blackout Tour. We were already, like, throwing these But that was, like, the Blackout Tour was, like, what saved us. If you remember right before that, we were, like, cutting cutting payroll and shit, right? So, like, it wasn't, like... It, well, that's because the uh, Back to Stool failed. But, like, we had already established, like, a very loyal, big audience that was yeah. growing through the quality of our writing. I don't know. It's a tough time it, to ask because the Business Insider stuff which is still obviously ongoing, is something I've never dealt with, and it's on a very different level from anything I've ever dealt with. I, also, I, think, uh, the, I think the KO was made the diehards, though. Like, yeah. that's the people, it's when they like saw you, are like, whoa. It, it's, like, this it, guy, yeah, yeah. this guy, we read him every day. Yeah. Like, he's not the monster they're portraying. Like, we got to back this guy it, up. It really is right like to politics to me, where it's like, you know, people liked Trump or whoever their, their guy was, but they almost rallied harder once there was someone – going against yeah. them, you know? So if you don't have yeah. the anti-fans, yeah. I don't know if our fans became as yeah, no, that's hardcore. True. Um, I, I still think ultimately it was probably better for business to give us that edge, but 
I don't know if, you know, all the other collateral damage. It's easy it. for me to say now no because it's like I'm 20 years into it and still dealing with it and like about to go to a fucking court over shit and deal yeah. with things that I guess I was naive about years ago. Prior to that, that though, like you would it wasn't Prior to that, I didn't give a fuck right? about anything. Yeah, no, nothing bothers me. Yeah. This bothers me. Right. Because this goes beyond me. It's dealing with like parents. Right. Personal. It's like they're, they're pretty fucking obviously horrendous allegations. So if it was uh, all that shit went away – but the money was significantly less. What, do you, what would you pick? I'd keep the money, I think. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Well, la last thing I got here, Kevin. What's the, um, what's the vibe at the office uh, with no Dave and particularly when Big Cat's like out with travel for work and everything like that? I mean, the office is just like a place for resources now. It's not really like a, a house of content anymore where – like you could like I used to finish up in the studio and then like walk back over to like the blogger bullpen to kind of like get on stool scenes or stir the pot or talk some shit or pose a question or whatever, you know. And now it's more just like people come here, they use the studios, they use the, you know, use the the whatever's around. And, you know, it's not as it's just a place now. It doesn't have like a atmosphere of content, really. Every now and then it'll pop off. But. It's, you know, it's different. What do you think of that, Dave? Yeah, I mean, that's not surprising. Yeah, I don't think it was. It, it's like the rundowns. It's like when, when, the, when the other guys are on, it's fine. It does well, but it's not, you know, the same or as, uh, you know, I mean, I also knew that. Like, I, I, that, that is, well, you could say, a good or bad part of me, but that I'm that – I bring that back to the office. Like I am a very, like the center, I let the fat pen, like getting people, not intentionally, but just being mean. Yeah, like for that, sure. And, that and I mean, people all... are afraid of you almost. So it's like they're on edge and, you know, if you. But the problem with that is we got so big, I don't know people yeah. well enough to like necessarily be like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I hear that. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you, if you had like, because you kind of, it was never like I'm leaving the office, right? It was just kind of like, oh, I'll be in Miami or I'll be here or whatever. I wonder if you were like, I'm leaving, you know, and it needs to like a new era needs to start or something like that. If it was like announced or or kind of I don't think controlled, so. do you think it would be different? No, yeah. no, it's so natural. It's not like it's concocted when I'm there. It's right. just like right. A, it is what it is. Right. All, All right. right, Kevin, anything else you kind of want to get out or you, no, that's man. about it? No, I, 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 I probably will never would never, ever, ever take that loan. But I do appreciate that offer, Dave. And I know it was real. So. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You're welcome. So that was a nice moment. Wes? Thank you, Kevin. Under that the, under nice the radar. <laughs> All, right. All right. Goodbye. All right. Thanks to KFC for coming on. Uh, Dave, before we get to Tico, Texas, let's talk about Helix Sleep Mattresses. Helix is a great mattress. Uh, yeah. So I have Helix. Uh, and I have a new Miami house. They are going to give me all the mattresses for that um, because I sleep good. I wouldn't use them if I couldn't sleep. Sleep's the most important part of the day. I took the Helix quiz. I was matched with the Midnight Mattress because I want something that felt not too firm, not too soft, and I sleep on my side. Everybody's unique, though, and Helix knows that, so they have several different mattress types to choose from. They have a 10-year warranty. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Um, Hel oh, very important. Cooling technology. Because I need cool when I sleep. People know that. Uh, they have a specialized cooling technology. So that will keep you nice and cool. They're offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Dave. That's helixsleep.com slash Dave for up to $200 off and two free pillows. It's a great mattress. They sent me one. I took the quiz. They sent it like perfectly for what I was looking for. So uh, I really like my Helix mattress. So definitely go check one out. Go grab one with promo code Dave. Um, all right. What would you think of that combo with KFC? Uh, you know, the, the, I didn't yeah, know. We don't talk that about. much. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the one minute man thing's big, but it, yeah, it doesn't surprise. It, it's what I expected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just think, you know, and, and, and to his point, like, with everything, I don't know. I think you're just, you know, you're always looking for, like, different bits, and but you don't like bits, you know? So that's why I'm always... I don't like... No, but... No, not bits. Bits isn't the right word. Segments and bits. I Like, bits to me is acting. Okay. 
Then, like, so you would like to play, like, games like you do on BFFs? Like, that's what you would like for, like... like yeah, to like, me, to me, if they're good, yeah. I, I mm -hmm. think BFF, that's important part of it. Okay. No, that's good to know. Like, to me, I just always kind of see it as, like, I just try to set up some dominoes here and have you knock them down, whether it be getting mad at someone or getting into a conversation with... This you know, show's KFC. a little different. I'm talking about, mm -hmm. like, daily radio. This is, this is, for the most part, like, inside Barstool. Yeah, people like like the updates, and people like to know what's going on with down in the office. So that's interesting, man. Um, but I'd like to hear you chop it up. All right, Tico Texas has joined us in studio. Tico, you had a – can you hear us, Tico? For, what's hey, up, Tico. What's up, y'all? What's up, guys? What's up, Dave? What's up, y'all? What's going on? Chilling, chilling like a villain. You know what I'm saying? Feeling good in the hood. How y'all feeling? I'm I'm good. That's good. All right, Tico, what – what are you – we're going to talk about this tweet storm, Eddie? Yes, Tico, you, uh, you were you were asked to be on because you, you something happened with a coworker or something. Yeah, definitely. I just want to say what's up to y'all. You know, I love the Dave Poitney show, obviously, because last time I was here in July, I pitched my podcast, and now I'm working for Barstool. So this podcast means something to me, um, something special. So thank y'all for having me on. By the way, um, of course, we had work happy hour. Um, that was on Thursday. It was a goodbye party for Deidre. I like Deidre. I don't really know anybody else's relationship with it. I guess not that many non-content people. I mean, not that many content people were there, so I don't know their relationship with it, but I like Deidre, so I decided to go. Um, I showed up by myself, you know, and I get there. It's kind of at Barstool. Um, I'm only talking to kind of who talks to me right now because I just don't know, like, who's my friend and not my friend. So when I get there, I'm not talking to nobody. I'm just chilling or whatever at the bar, getting the free liquor, of course. Like, you're at work getting free liquor. This is like my dream. I love this. So I'm drinking and shit, and I'm not talking to anyone. Someone from Token CEO, a, pro a producer, comes up to me and is in my face for like 40 minutes. She's like, oh, we're, I see you're going to South by Southwest, because by the way, I am doing the first Tico 10 live show at South by Southwest. You know, Dave, me and you go back to that. Um, so she knows about that, she saw that. I created that by myself too and organized that by myself, by the way, hey. But um, that's August 17th for any stoolies listen to that, 5 to 7 p.m. It's gonna be at the Scratch House, 617 E7th Street in Austin. Y'all pull up if y'all be around, first Tico 10 live show. But um, I'm also performing later on that night at 11 p.m. But back to the story. Um, she knows I'm going to South by Southwest. She's like, let me get your number. Like, I'm so proud of what you're doing. I've been seeing the Tico 10. Because the Tico 10, I mean, we've gotten Ari Fletcher, who has a million followers. She's an Instagram influencer. We got, we've had Damani Harris, which is T.I.'s son. Jersey Jerry, Donnie Does World, Tommy Smokes, Brandon Walker, KB Nick, Chicken Fried Grace, Mean Girl Stu, Mega Making Money, Mama Tico, Fat Nick, Puya Strict. It's been, I, all right, it's Tico, been a lot. It's been, it doesn't. If you just I mean, you know, it's been a lot going voice, down on there. So I, I just want, I just want to put it out means. there. If anybody wants to watch it, y'all can see it on the Tico Ten YouTube channel. But um, get you know, your been, plugs, Tico. Get been, your plugs. You know what I'm saying? Been doing lit shit. Been doing a little lit shit in the three months since the Tico Ten has been popping off. So she's like, we want to connect with you. That that gets my number. All right. So. M.A. walks up. M.A. is a big part of this story. Shout out to Michael Angelo. He walks up into the work happy hour. Now, that's my homie. Never kicked it with him outside of work, but if you can feel energy, that's the homie. So he walks up. I guess he's cool with, I'll just say her name. Her name is Mackenzie. She is um, a producer, I guess, for Token CEO with Erica. So he walks, you know, him and Mackenzie, you're talking a little bit. I overhear them say something like, we're going to the flat dog or some shit like that. And I'm like, okay, like, I was never going. So I didn't really give a fuck. I didn't even hear it. So M.A. is like, why would I go pay for drinks when there's free drinks right here in front of me? I'm not going. I'm like, yeah, we chilling. So he's showing me his phone because he wants me to be in this little barstool film that he's trying to produce. And he wants me like some 1920s detective in it. So he's showing me his phone and showing me what he did with Stu and his dad at Stu's crib. Mackenzie's text pops up. The text says, don't invite Tico. Um, at first, like me, at first, it's awkward, right, between me and M.A. He's like, oh, my gosh, I'm not fucking with that. He's like, you know what, I'm going to just stay here with you because if they're not cool with your energy, they're not cool with mine because, shit, it's like we have similar energy since I've been here sitting with you. So I'm like, all right, cool, so we continue to drink. I, after a couple drinks, five, six, seven, that's when I went ahead and tweeted that tweet because I thought about it a little bit more and I was just like, damn, it feels really fucked up that she put my name in the shit 
mind you, I, w- I never said I was going, but it's kind of giving off some mean girl shit. You know, and it's like everybody thinks Mackenzie is the sweetest bitch, but obviously she's a fucking mean girl because it's like you're not open to other people's energy. That's not that's mean girl shit. That's mean girl shit. Cause stop acting like Barstool is just some the the exclusive club in the fucking world. Like it's like especially with especially with coworkers who are in the club with you. It's not giving middle ground it's not giving i want to figure out this i want to learn a little bit more it's giving i want to stay in a baseball fans basic ass structure and never learn anything different you know and i feel like it's kind of hard already for me because i don't know who likes me who doesn't like me so the bitch was in my face for 40 minutes and then as soon as she's leaving she's gonna she's texting shit i would have respected if she would have said it to my face hey corey who is also part of this story because Corey gonna come at me on Twitter talking about some, oh, you're doing this for content. Who the fuck's Corey? Yeah, fuck Corey, because what the fuck you think is going on? I'm not doing, I'm saying. No, I'm not saying saying fuck Corey, I'm saying who is Corey? (laughs) (laughs) His name is Corey Smutledge, and he, or that's his Twitter. So, all right, Tico, let's start, all right, that is a dick thing to definitely text. I'll give you that. I don't know where you're coming up with the cool club. Like, I've never perceived Mackenzie, I know who that is, is like, Thinking she's in the cool club of Barstool. I don't even know who the other guy is. Where were you shit faced? No. No. Yeah, that's a dick thing. I, it, then I, it, it happened like you said. She apologized to. She did. She texted me and she apologized and she basically blamed it all on Corey. But I'm like, you put yourself in it by texting Ma. Let Corey text Ma, and you wouldn't have been in it. But you made it your business, and now y'all in the business. And now I got a fucking issue. Got it. I mean, I'd be mad if somebody said something about me. I, I don't. What did you ever think twice about going public with it? I at first I didn't care. I didn't care. I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter. Like, I guess you know she's gonna fucking judge me or whatever. They're gonna think I'm gonna come there and you know get on the bar maybe and fucking get arrested. So it's whatever. At first I didn't care. The more I started drinking, the more I started thinking about it a little deeper and a little bit more personal. And that's when I sent out the tweet. And I didn't know it was gonna get that type of reaction. It was just my yeah. Thoughts. That would be the only thing. I think you have the you obviously have the right to be mad. Yeah. I would be mad. The only thing from the and this isn't necessarily like a Tico thing because Tico's Tico, but this is a new Barstool thing. Mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of our new employees are wildly careless on how they handle their social. Yeah. Like wildly careless. Yeah. Like we've been doing this for 20 years and we have people who've been here for a cup of coffee, just like slinging it all over. And it's like, whoa, you may want your seat maybe want to be warm before you go public with this shit. That's how I view it. A little bit. I think it's something for everybody to think about. Yeah, we're always out there, but some things maybe don't have to totally be tweeted every three seconds. I don't know. That's that's how I view the world now a little bit. And Mackenzie's in here now. Hi. She is. Hi. So, Mackenzie, yes. we just heard the whole story. Seems like you were kind of a jerk. Yes. No, I will admit that was not the right text that I should have been sent. It, sent. And I obviously apologize for that. And like 100%, I will own up to that. Like that is not who I am. It was just like the situation was I was going to get drinks after with like my close friends here. Somebody else's friend was in town visiting and we were at the happy hour upstairs. I just didn't want it to become a big like after party thing. It wasn't specifically like don't invite Tico. It was like the text also said like don't tell her. But it was, no, it was more said don't invite. No, it said tell. It did. Can we pull it yeah, up? Yeah, I can pull it up. Um, but it was just like, it was just like the situation we were in. I didn't want it to become this like big thing when I was like, we were just getting drinks, like literally five of us people. Mm-hmm. And it was, it really was nothing specifically towards you. Like I said, like there was but no. But you can understand why I would, right? No. Uh, my name. No, you I know. You didn't say don't tell anybody. You said no, I don't. Know. Invite, no, a hundred, no, a hundred percent. I yeah. like, I am a hundred percent owning yeah. up to that. It was just like, you happened to be the person that was sitting yeah. there. That kind of like, and I don't know what was said about yeah. whatever, but yeah. that and like, if whoever was sitting there, that yeah. would have been like what I said that person's name, just because again, I didn't want it to just like become this like big thing. Um, All right. So I, there it is. I mean, I don't yeah. know that would need much. Again, I get the vibe some of these. Some of these disputes, and we have them come on this show, prior, I feel like they're, they, they are long organic before they reach to this point. And, and 
now they're happening fast and furious with people that are relatively new. And I, I don't know, it feels off to me a little bit. So that would be a message. Again, I think Tico has every right to be upset about it, but that would be a message to everybody. Like, not everything has to be public. And if you're like shit faced and seven or eight drinks in, maybe wait till the next day and decide whether you want to go to social media on it. I can that apologize be... for that tweet. No, it's okay. I, I don't just, think you, you owe know. an apology, no, no, Tico. Yeah. That's I, not really I, it. I, I, I can, I'm, I'm I can just, for, the, for making it so public and making it, that's not really necessarily was. I do treat my Twitter as, you know, something that we get our thoughts thoughts off yeah, on. It's, yeah. And it, I mean, it did hurt you. And I, I, I do understand that your intentions weren't to hurt me, no. but it came off very mean girly and very clicky. You yes. know, and no, it just, no. just and I, my name was. Yes, good. and I totally understand that. And I think it was like a little blown out of proportion, but I do understand. And like, yeah. I obviously apologize and like I texted you. Yeah. And so like, I just want people to know that like, I would never like, that's not like who and I, I am. And yeah. I'm not like a mean girl. I'm like, I'm not, I don't think I'm like any sort of like fake bitch, but I do understand. You did call yourself a fake bitch at the work hop. Happy okay, well, hour, that's, by the we way, hold talk, on, hold on, hold on y'all. Yeah. So at the work happy hour, <laughs> I, I asked everybody their signs. I'm obsessed with astrology. And I did ask everybody around, what's your sign, what's your sign? She says, oh, I'm a Gemini, so I'm fake. Well, two-faced, two-faced. Two-faced. Yeah. She said, I'm two-faced. That's, so that's just a she joke did that warn me. She did warn me, Dave. She did warn me that some shit like this would happen, so I shouldn't even have been surprised. See, my right, issue Lindsay? here from a content side is I'm just not invested in this. <laughs> Back yeah, it's ca- yeah, I Everybody think it's really stu- I No, I, I think I, it's who? really silly. Who I think Tico? it's really silly. Everyone on in the in the Twitter verse is going crazy. I literally got a hundred DMs. Well that's because you didn't say who it was. Like I mean, but still, that's kinda though, like, I mean that's that's drama. crazy. Yeah, but one tweet could go for a hundred DMs. Yeah, but that's what you gotta remember, sort of. By the way, total side note, Tico. Yeah. Did you ask for us to pay? For your us to fly your brother from Houston to New York every single week? For no, t- I did not. T- so I did not. I definitely did not. I told him he needs to do it on his own. When I flew in and I did the Dave Poitney show, y'all did not pay for my flight. So why was I asked? But because of Jetski. Him and Jetski have a have a close relationship. And like they talk without me. I told them, Got I it. swear to God on my life, the week I said, get your own ticket. Get your ass out here and do the work. Because we're, we're at the end of the day, we've been given a platform. Stop being a baby about this shit. It's not cool. Okay. You're grown. Right. Get your own ticket. Get your ass out here. And once Dave sees us putting in the work, it's going to be easier for him to be like, all right, I can do this or I can do that. I would have liked Jetski to have a conversation with me because I didn't even know he was going to come to you. He told me afterwards. So I feel like he could have came to me and be like, what do we want out of the situation? Can we, or do we want a $300 budget that we can do maybe a month and get him one flight a month? He can do it in person. What do you want from Dave? I never got that conversation. I never got up there. All he did was tell me later. I talked to Dave. What the fuck are you talking to Dave for? I told him to buy his own ticket. What the okay. hell? Let's not baby him. Nobody babied me. I pushed and I That's fought fast. and I gritted my teeth to get to this bar store world. It don't just come easy like that. Okay. All right. Tico. Thank you, Tico. Mackenzie. Thank you, Mackenzie. Thanks, Thank guys. y'all so much. Love Dave Playing the Show. Love Patrick, Tico. You cool, Mackenzie, sometimes whenever you're not being fake. <laughs> <laughs> fuck with you, Eddie. I fuck with you. <laughs> See you, Tico. Thank you. I'm with, I'm with you, Dave. I, I, these, I love drama like the next one, but the last couple of things where it's just like behind the scenes, like Caitlin Walk, I don't know. It's just like it's 300 people there. That not, the, the, these, if I were there... And the Dave Portman show, again, I'm, I don't want anything. These would not be things that were hitting the light of day. These are not, Mackenzie, to me, is not like content in that way. I know she does some of the voiceovers. If you, I'm not saying what she does right, but that, that, not stuff I'm interested There's in. There's 300 people in the company, 350 people in the company. Like, people are going to say shit, do shit. It's like, not everything has to be a content Correct. Situation. But that's what that's what happens when that shit goes on social media. Like people are like, "Oh, they're trying to suppress it. You guys aren't trying to have it on. It's Barstool's not authentic anymore. There's no you guys all just no, trying no. To but it's not it's not not authentic to me. Not interesting. It's yeah, it's not interesting. And and I don't like 
it's not an organic growth of the people. Like, I don't, do people know enough about Mackenzie to be like, oh, she, like, the people generally we get involved in these have long track records and have organically become part of content. Like Dana getting in the mix with things, who's been here for six years, has like kind of been on camera, off camera, new people. I, Caitlin Walker didn't even know she was here. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, but I don't know. And, I, and I'm generally want to know the threshold of the people like when we when i hire content people it's all right fair what's fair game what's not everything's on the table yes no like this is not where we're at and with like some of the people that we're bringing in yeah i mean i i just think you never know too like there's always the element of how how it goes could be i mean it could go two ways every time so like that, me say that Mean Girl thing, guys. Like, I think that's like the biggest episode we've ever had. Yeah, those are it's up there. Yeah, those, those with their Alex Benz content, Jordan Woodruff. There's a bunch of content people. Brandon Walker yeah. was involved in it. She came yeah. in for a little bit. Hannah Cook was in it. There was a lot of shit there. No, I agree. And to be fair, like I, because you know, just playing this segment with Kareem, like we said, like I don't, I don't think Dave's gonna really care for this. But you know, it does. I mean, let's throw it, let's throw a dart and let's see if it goes well. So, I, but I, I, I get your point. Um, let's, uh, let's talk about Taylor made Dave, and then we'll continue with the show. Okay. Uh, Taylor made visit Taylor made.com slash Taylor made to check out Taylor made and Barstool golf gear. Come on. I need some of this. I, I talk about my golf game and lack thereof. I don't have a great game. I'm lucky to break a hundred. And that, although that's before my shoulder fell apart. So probably 120. Uh, I do have Taylor made irons though. They have all the best clubs now. The Stealth, and they gave me the irons, actually, new ones. The Stealth carbon wood driver can be found stores. Um, the future driver performance skins with tailor made carbon twist face, composed of 60 layers of carbon sheets, strategically arranged for better energy transfer, faster ball speeds across larger area of the face. That is foreplay talk. For me, I can tell you what they do. I'm not a good golfer. Their irons are forgiving. So you don't have to hit it perfect. And I mean, you still can't fucking be the worst of all time, but. They will give you a better chance of breaking 100. It's very important to have good irons, good clubs if you stink. I'll probably more so than if you're good. So TaylorMade, that's the, what I have in my bag. Visit BarstoolSports.com slash TaylorMade to check out TaylorMade and Barstool Golf Gear today. Boom. Go do it. Um, so I, I did want to just a couple more things here before we close out. So the Boston trip, it seems like you kind of had like a – like a nice little homecoming there. Do you any more desire to kind of pick up there from Miami or, you know, from the Hamptons and go to well, Boston I, I mean, some more? Well, I mean, I've always – that's not a new thing. I fucking love Boston. It's so beautiful. The weather was actually decent. I would definitely be like front row Celtics game every fucking night if I lived there. But taxes still stink and they don't have gambling. If that changes, one of them, that could certainly change. You know, and I always want Nantucket house over – my Hamptons, but I couldn't find any place in Nantucket. So nothing so no, has changed in how I viewed that. No place in the future or nothing like that? You're not looking for places yet? No, I, no not, not yet. Um, other than that, you had uh, strong takes about Calvin Ridley getting suspended for uh, gambling. A, yeah, I mean, a year for $1,500, 18 parlay? three different bets that he placed legally in Florida when he's not active. And like the Washington football club, God knows what's going to happen to them, but they couldn't even write the results on paper. And you know, you have players who beat women, Ray Rice, uh, Roger Goodell watched the fucking footage, didn't do anything to him. Basically. Uh, it's just the hypocrisy of the league is insane. And anybody who's like, Oh, inside information. What are you talking about? Like, what in the world are you talking about inside information? So anybody could have inside information, tell friends. The people who are wrong the most are the experts. Nobody knows what's going to fucking happen on Sunday. And it's not like private. It's not like private shit. Like a whole fucking team of people know and could tell their friends, brothers. So it's just a crazy, the hypo hypocrisy is what does it. They take every ad on the NFL is for gambling. It's just to come down this hard, this fast, when they let other shit slide is bananas. I agree with that. Obviously, the Ray Rice is the best comparison, but you don't think there's something to, and I don't think Ridley was doing this because, 
you know, he was throwing parlays. He's obviously not like a, a sharp gambler, but you don't think there's something too if he knew Matt Ryan had a bad thumb and he's like, hey, I'm going to try, but it's not looking likely. And like Monday to get a better line if he was well, a sharp well, would be a problem. Well, I, I said as long you obviously Matt Ryan bet like you can always bet on your team. Sure, but I don't know. I, I guess there would as long as you bet on your team. Obviously, if you bet against them, you should be in jail. But if you bet on your team, why? How is that? I could actually understand in baseball more so. That's the problem, even if you bet on your team, because like when Pete Rose is the manager, maybe he fucks up his pitching staff because he's got a lot on one game and he's trying to win. But in the NFL, I don't see it that way. If you're playing to win by as many as you can win, I don't care. And by the way, that information is not like one per anybody could have that. I mean, they give the injury reports. It's like, I think a fine if you're not truthful with them. They're given that's for what do you think those injury reports are for? I get, but there, but there's but a little bit more when it's closer. Gambling. No, but if it's closer though, Dave, there is like if you're closer, closer you to know what? more. Like if he's closer to the situation, like hey, how's it feel? But, but and if someone is questionable, Eddie, it's like there's hey, not like I'm one guy. But. There's like an entire fucking team. Like every time I've gotten a, a call from somebody who's part of a team or something, they're like hey, this that they're wrong a hundred percent of the fucking time. Like that's not like hey, my thumb's injured. Like the NFL is covered so closely. And so in depth, there's like each team has like a thousand reporters. If the only way Matt Ryan would know using that example, and again, if you're betting on it, I don't know how that plays a factor in anything, but the only person who would have inside information would be Matt Ryan. If Matt Ryan tells one person, everybody around the team knows. Yeah, I just think it'd get more complicated than that, but... I don't know. Whatever. Uh, what do you think about the DraftKings CEO uh, that came out uh, that it cost $642,000 a year to protect him? I don't know who he's protecting himself from unless there's like gambling. <laughs> like, who is he protecting himself from? I, peop, like, unless people just Google him and are like google rich people and just find him randomly but that was strange someone like, i want security i say if none i need it i want it and i need it but i'm like a well-known person and a lot of people don't like me well i don't know who the fuck he's protecting himself again no one knows who he is and like he's just a business guy unless you invested in way up on but that was a weird stat to me. And it said Tim Cook from Apple, he it cost six thirty for a year for for the year for him. Which I do yeah. get that. And I don't know if people are like trying to kidnap like what what did people that rob? Like I need more I need security more than Tim Cook. <laughs> do you um do you, so you've been looking into that actually? Yeah, yeah. No, I I one hundred percent believe I need security, yes. Like a distant just in case something gets weird, just yes. And you, for a long time, you were against that. Yeah, I don't like it. I'm more so like probably if I'm going out at night when people are like drinking and shit like that, not just walking around the streets. Yeah. So you just don't want any uh, situations. You're not trying. Because the thing is, is like if people, and I'll, and I'll say this too, you're not going to say it, but like you, people will bother you all the time. And you'll never say no. No, I don't care about that. I'm, yeah. I'm like, if somebody has a legit problem with me. Yes. And it's not for that. Like even you have... Because we got security at the office now. Mike, Anthony, and those guys are yeah. great. I love those guys. And you'll be like, no, 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 let the people come say what's yeah, up yeah, all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, never that's not what I would need. I'm talking for the one in a year where somebody really fucking is like, this guy's fucking Hitler, and I'm going after it. Like, that type of situation. Is there, like, a situation going on right now? No. No? I saw some tweets. I didn't know, if, obviously, if you want to talk about that and whatnot. Oh, I would rather not. It's it's the is that you're talking. Silvana tweeted a little bit like it's the same group from Business Insider that it's just people from my past who uh, are relentless. But it's oh, not. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's a dangerous situation. It's more like trying to ruin our lives situation. But it is what it is. Well, that sucks. Mm-hmm. How long has that been going on since the article? Or is that like a new weekly thing? 
It's been going on for a long ass time. It's been going on for a long ass time. Since I've been aware of the business insider shit. Remember me telling you uh, stories about people who make shit up about me? It's kind of along those veins. It's, mm -hmm. It just sucks. I would not have gone public with that. If, and it's just not worth it. All right. My bad. Um, other topics here. Uh, Dallas Braden, he got mad about the, um, the, the Manfred shirts. What a baby. Fucking Dallas is a crazy person. I, so I guess what the situation here, the clown nose shirt, I am very strict with letting people use it. Okay. Um, I probably said no 30 times to different requests. Clem, I know, has asked for it. I don't know if you guys have asked for it, I think, for, like, Chicago coach or something. I've said no 99% of the time. I guess, like, two years ago, he asked to use it for Manfred. I said no. The strike, when everyone was going crazy, Kevin asked me to use it. KSC, guy who's been with me for, like, 20 years. It's like, sure. I didn't give it a second. He's like, can we use it? it was, I knew it was going viral. I was like, all right, use it. He sent me that text out of the blue saying it was because he struck me out or something like three years ago, like that I'm being petty. It's like, what are you talking about? First of all, it's my design. It's like, I don't even know if he thought I would have made money on it. It would always be bars. I don't know what the hell he was mad about. So you, you're, you're confident though he was actually mad though? He was really mad, yes. Yeah. He wasn't fucking joking. Mm -hmm. We did reach out. Uh, through text and uh, DM on the Twitter, Kareem reached out and he didn't to ask him to come on and he didn't answer. So I don't know if he saw that. I mean, I, I, I think he's just mad with me in general and I've never had like, he's a little, he's not always been the easiest for me to deal with, but I don't know what's happening with starting nine. His contract ran up. I think the tea leaves are Jared won't be with us. Like, which is big news, obviously. Um, that's not official official, but you know, I think he thinks he was wronged, but he wasn't. I mean, on that note too, I was told like 15 minutes before that Jared's bloggers page is not on the website anymore. Yeah. I, I, I'm under the impression Jared is going to be leaving. Okay. Obviously he'd make that official. I don't know that he has yet. Any more thoughts on that besides what's been said about a great offer he got and you just you couldn't match it or that that's the truth. He got a big offer uh, from a competitor, and you know it. I I we could have kept Jared at less money than the competitor is paying him. He would have taken a home count, hometown discount. Um, but good for him. It's like still, we got to make decisions like a sports team. Uh, it's not my money. I went to Penn. I'm like, hey, competitors going after him. They're paying him this much. Do you want to keep him? If you do, you guys got to pony up. And we didn't get an offer that I didn't even give them a counter because it, it, was, it wasn't where I knew it would need to be. So I think Jared clearly wants to stay with us. But I told him, if you get the offer, I will not begrudge you at all for taking it. I've said take it. So it seems like he's going to take it. And I've, I've never changed in my philosophy with, with us. If, if you get an offer that we can't compete with, I'll never begrudge you. I think he thought I was going to be mad or something. I'm not. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. One thing, none. One thing that was going back and forth is, uh, well, I'll wait. I'll wait until he goes. I don't want to beat him on anything, and who knows, maybe he reverses. But um, it, 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 the way I'm understanding it is he's all but gone. All right, so breaking news, Jared Carabas is no longer uh, with Barstool. Um, well, we'll wait till he says that, but that's what I think is going to happen. Okay, that's what we think. So not officially, not officially, but. I, I would say oh. it's not official till he, he says what's happened. Till he he has that. not, he, he has just consistently said to me, I think I'm taking the other offer, but he hasn't been like, I took the other offer. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then if, I don't know if him and if him or Dallas wanted to come on, would you entertain that? 
depends. A lot of it depends where they go or where Jared, like I'm understanding Jared's going to direct competitor. I like Jared. He, he, we won't be able to interact and like be, try to help him grow anymore. If it just hurts us, you know, it's like, yeah. even if you like the guy, you don't want to help the competitor necessarily, but we'll mm -hmm. wait. Paul, you got anything on that? Oh, no. this is the first time kind of hearing it. So sad. I like Jared as a person. We are good friends, but yeah, that's it. Um, Dante I think, wrote he, a good I, think he, I think he'll have an interesting vibe. I think he'll be like pretty sad. Well, didn't he fucking who cried after like three weeks of radio? I bet he'll have some emotional goodbye. Like, I wish we could pay him what he's getting. Uh, but, you know, we don't spend like the other companies in this space do. And I, there's a reason we don't. So. All right. So to be uh, continued, probably. Um, uh, Dante had a good blog. I saw you retweeted about the Blackout Tour. Ten years since the Rutgers show. Yeah, I saw Gaz. I almost took a shot at Gaz, but I've been taking so many shots at him when he just outlined the entire, like, work schedule. He did not have in there asterisks, if Gaz is interested in a girl, major detour that everybody, when they get back, complains to me about. That was uh, part of it as well. It is kind of crazy that was 10 years ago, Dave, don't you think? It, yeah, everything moves fast. Dude, did you see uh, that was the night, that video was the night you pitched the perfect game? Yeah, Rutgers, I did. <laughs> the, I, it's hard doing that. We, our, our talent was like girls dancing on stage, and I just, I had a straight tens. I, Elio one time, House of Blues, got run over. Elio came to a House of Blues show, and he's like, you need any help? I'm like, manage. So basically, it was shifts. Girls come on stage, dance. They, li they, they live for it. And then after a couple songs, we rotate. The next crew comes on stage. We didn't let guys anywhere near them. Um, it was just girls could be like comfortable on stage. So, but we need someone to manage like not letting them bum rush the stage. And it was House of Blues Boston. I'm like, Elio, can you help me? Like, it's like, all right, go over there, Mitch. The man literally was like on his back. He got stampeded by like 3,000 girls. Very funny. People would always yeah. talk about that'd be a great job. Be like, oh, you'd get to talk to all the girls there. It was Lord of the Flies. Like no one enjoyed yeah. it once you got going. No. It was people just running you over to get on stage. <laughs> we got to have a hit big, like a uh, big panel, big Royal Rumble with like Dante, Devlin and everybody just to kind of recap one show. That would be good, I think. Gaz's friends. I remember the balloon. Who was the who's the guy whose hand got ripped Wal off? Walshy. Like, Walshy. <laughs> <laughs> we had this big balloon drop on one show. It's like all the balloons are in a net, and he's supposed to pull this kid. Walshy's supposed to pull the. It's like a rope, like a rope climb rope, and <laughs> he didn't. He didn't get the balloons down like nearly in time, and I was mad. I'm <laughs> like, what the fuck? He showed me his hand. He had like a ninth degree burn on his hand <laughs> trying to get like the thing. It was stuck. It was quite the crew. It was a lot of high tensions. Some of the biggest fights of all time on that thing. Yeah. Yeah, we should do yeah. something like that. That'd be funny to talk about the old stories. There's a lot of old stories in that. It would be good. I mean, I was probably only on like 1% to 2%. My thing was I'd get Paul's call chewing gum loudly at 3 a.m. <laughs> Fire marshal's here. What do you want me to do? I don't know, Paul. I'm not there. What do you want? Like, what do you want? Like, I don't know. He's like, yep, they're shutting it down. We got chaos. Like, all right, that's good. Uh, I'll look forward to, like, damage control in the morning. It's 4 a.m. Yeah, inside editions here, there's 5,000 people that want refunds. The cops are pissed. Um, Mr. Chewing his gum. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's trading ice cream for T-shirts at that place, and he's just not worrying about it. <laughs> it's wild um, time. That's wild. Do you want to talk yeah, about how, he, how Dave is taking shots at me all the time, unsolicited? I mean, there's oh, a Rico bodied you. So I have a question about that. First of all, that was a bad tweet. And we run into you that. Think? Kind of, yeah, no, it was a, a who did that. I, if you didn't see it, Eddie, uh, college basketball, somebody Sorry. committed a foul down three to so, so you couldn't do it. And they're like, Oh, what a foul, bad foul. Yeah. So we have a, a new guy that started a couple of months ago who I, when I saw it, I actually thought I was like, He's he's a weird brain. Meek Phil. He, you've seen him. He's on the yak a couple of times. He's a weird thinking kid. 
there's been times when like people like him be similar to Bailey in that sense where like, I'll be like, I don't necessarily get this, but like, you'll look back a minute later and there's a thousand retweets and like that kind of thing. And I'm not going to understand everything that I knew was bad. Um, and then Rico called it out. Um, and he's, I think he's got a hair on his ass about me because of the, I don't know. I don't know. I think. Yeah. But I was thinking about it more because I was like, I want to make this better. And I, I don't know, Dave, I have a question for you with, the way you know college basketball coverage we have meek phil doing it they bench bob's doing covering college basketball from a social perspective like the captioning and like the highlights is one of the guys on my team so i'm just wondering sh- during march madness is it worth wasting someone on bench mob no to- not worth one no make oh. make at- I'm not even being sarcastic, Eddie. They can do it themselves. Rico yeah. doesn't have that much fucking shit going on. He can do it himself and bring your guy to the main. That's like, the biggest no-brainer of all time. That like, that's different. actually crazy. Yeah, so I want, like... Bench Mob's not doing their own social? Well, they have someone from the social team helping them do the highlights. <sighs> that's crazy to me. Yeah. He, oh, my God, that's crazy. Yeah, so... I was no, no, at- that guy... That is a, that is, when we talk about waste of resources, example one, that guy, get him off bench mob, get him on barstool. That's crazy. Yep. Okay, done. I, if, if there's a list of more things like that, pull him back, get him off those brands, get him on the main. That's crazy. Get me a list of that. That's nuts. You- That's like the, the prime example of everything I've talked about us doing incorrectly who is the guy that's on bench bob guess actually it's uh dave's boy uh dukes dukes is a a big college basketball fan um and he's been good since he admitted that he was an idiot and he's a dumb dummy but he's on on when it comes to college basketball he's on top of everything he does it for them so main account main account main account you're so you're giving dukes main account privileges again huh for college basketball yeah, just to tweet like highlights and like that kind yeah, of yeah. thing. But mm-hmm. no brainer. Um, do you think bench that's going to cause a rift? Bench mob after he does it from the main. If bench mob wants to then click tweet whatever he does and do it, fine. But no, main first. Where are you at with Rico right now? I, what did you think of Jake freaking out on him on that clip too? I mean, he's a crazy person. We've talked all last night. He's he, you're, you are never going to get through to him. He thinks he's a victim all the time. There's been uh, the college basketball coverage has been all over the place too. It's been uh, it's been. I feel like we're really settling in here. What do you With mean? The, Roan giving a speech at TCU. Oh, I know, I know. Crazy. Big Cat, Carl right. at Illinois. It was crazy. Um, last couple things here. Uh, the Glennie verse debut. Did you follow that? Glennie's got a vlog on the uh, Barstool YouTube. So check that out, Dave. Okay, I will. Um, also, I never said it too, but friend of Jerry. Jerry has a podcast. Jersey Jerry. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I know so that. Check. And uh, that's uh, people did ask that, Dave. I know. I believe it's about addiction and whatnot. Obviously, people know Jerry's struggle about that. I think people tried to do it back in the day, maybe Smitty, and that was kind of shot down as an idea. <sighs> Smitty was tr- was talking with somebody else about rough and rowdy. Okay, so go listen to friend of Jerry. Um, last two things here. Frank the Tank protests at MLB HQ. Yeah, I wish they got thrown the clink. Great job, though. I like getting out in the streets. Yeah, who is that? Tank, Jerry, and Dugs. Yep. And then uh, last thing, Big Cat talked about earlier in the show, uh, the Mincy tour has officially ended. Who's better than Mincy? Nobody. Just ask him. Um, I have one quick shot I want to throw out, Ooh. and this is at Troops. I, he doesn't even know. He doesn't seem to get it. So troops, he's like, I'm coming to New York. Do you know any good steakhouses? On a scale of one to 10, how rude is this? So I'm coming. I need a good steakhouse. I'm like, all right, what's the date? And I give him this place that I'm a member of Zero Bond, which I think is the best food in New York, period. You have to be a member to go, all right? I'm like, hey, I know this place is best. He's like, what's the date? I call the owner guy, text him. I'm like, one of my employees, I'm in Miami, he's coming. He wants a special night with his uh, wife. Can you make a reservation for him for me? Yup. 8.30 p.m. Tuesday, March 2nd. Okay. All set. 
A couple days go by, I, te- I, I DM troops. I'm like, how was it? He goes, oh, I didn't make it. I'm like, my flight was delayed, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, uh, did you cancel it? He's like, I couldn't find a number on the website, even though there is a number, maybe no one picked up. But he never told me. So I texted my contact. I'm like, uh, I'm really sorry. Like, I guess my employee like didn't show up and didn't tell anybody. He's like, all right, no big deal. Scale of rudeness, infinity, infinity. How do I, how, like you ask me for a, a tip. I go out of my way to make a reservation for you that you're not even supposed to be allowed to get. You no show and you don't even fucking tell me. Like, if you were going to be late, you could have just said, hey, I'm not going to make it. I would have told the guy. Like, I've never made a reservation myself for myself and just no-showed. If I'm on fucking open table, I cancel it. What a dickhead move. Wow. For people that don't know the backstory, there's not many people you do that for at Zero Bond. He said, I couldn't go there. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, well, you have wiggly away in there anyways. But it, it... if someone asked me in that manner, I, I would do some, but I'll never lift a finger for him again, ever. No, you got to can't. You got to let them know because they're wasting the table. Then they're sitting there, especially if they know it's you. If you did come I 15. I fucking asked the owner. Yeah. What a dick. What an absolute cock. Because they probably held that table knowing it was 100%. for you for how long? At least an hour they probably held it. Oh, a hundred percent. What a wow. fucking piece of shit move. Damn, we should have got troops on here. See, this and he, does, he, he, he was never going to tell me. Did you, what did he say? Like, did you tell he's him? Like, like, oh, he, his literal thing was like, oh, I tried to call. I couldn't find a number, which I look quickly on the website. There is a number. I'm not saying they answer it because it's not a normal place. But what did he say? So I asked him, he, I don't even know when he was supposed to, he was supposed to go on, by the way, he was asking me beforehand enough, like, how do I dress? He showed me a picture of him. He's like, is this the right dress code? Like all of this shit, I'm rereading it. Um, and then uh, Saturday, I'm like, how was it? He says, fucking fuming fam. My flight got delayed, so I missed the reservation. I was looking forward to that too, G. I'm in Charlotte now. I, that he, and I said, did you cancel it? I tried to get through to them, but I couldn't find a number to call. I checked online, but I couldn't find shit. It's like, why won't you just tell me? If your flight is like, you know, it, asshole. And never was going to say it either. So you won't be doing that again for him, I assume. I wouldn't press the stoplight for him to cross the street. Me either. That's tough. That's tough. <laughs> I mean, have a degree, a class, and decorum. Holy moly. The way they do things wherever he's from. Arsenal. Class. He's an Arsenal fan. He's a scumbag. Absolute <laughs> scumbag. <laughs> Troops, if you're hearing this and you want to come defend yourself, you're more than welcome. Is he in the office? I don't know. Is he uh, Kareem? He's in the office less than I am. I haven't seen him today, but I'll check. All right, yeah. Go check. I mean, what do you say if you're him? I think the only thing you, you can do is jump on a grenade. Be like, yep. That was a dick move. Yeah, that's t- especially like, I think, I don't know how much, not that the restrictions. I get mad if I ask somebody for a favor, a reservation, and I'm going. I literally start stressing out if I'm a minute late. It's like they're doing something for me. I asked. I get like nervous. Like I, Sylvana and I, if we've been in like, well, we've been in a bunch of fights, but if we're in a, like, if she's running late, I'll, like, stamp my foot. It's like, I asked for a reservation at this time. Because seen, to I've me, you're that, the... I've seen what? that in real life down here in Florida. Like, you, when you get, if you get a table reservation, you come out and go multiple places because you're like, I can't cancel. Like, I, I feel... Once really you ask a favor yeah. and call it in, you are bound by blood to honor what you've asked for. I hope he's there. 
I don't think he is. We just looked around the office. No. Can't find okay. him. Okay. Call him. Um, all right. So no troops. Um, unless, yeah, unless you want to call him, Dave. <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> That's tough. It's tough. Um, all right, Dave. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for listening. That's it for today. Uh, right. We'll be back next week. We'll see you then.